Hey everybody, what's up? Austin here. Uh, uh, gonna do another trade recap today on my trade SAEX the day after Valentine's Day. Funny how SAEX always seems to go after Valentine's Day or around Valentine's Day. <laughs> but um, yeah, before I get started, I want to say that I'm not licensed or registered. I'm not a financial advisor uh, and this shouldn't be taken as investment advice even if it sounds like it. That being said, um, I did have a good trade on it and I'd like to go over some of the reasons why I got in. Um, I'm doing this over the weekend so my arrows are gone but I have this, the chart that I saved immediately after I um, took the trade and, and left. Uh, that's right here. And I want to go over, I think that's it, I want to go over why I got in, like why I could have been eager, why, why I could have been eager um, on it and um, why I sold and and all that stuff. So um, this was my trade on it. Bought in the morning, sold the rip. You know, nothing. Uh, I think I left a little bit on for you know hopes and dreams, um, but this definitely canned it when it when it failed at 550 for sure. Um, yeah. So let's go over it. So the first thing I do when I go. Uh, approach a trade, potential trade, is I look at the daily chart, because um, I want to know, normally in small cap land, I want to know if it's her or not. Now, I don't have to with SAEX, because I know the company, it's it's a perennial turd bag, uh, it has forever, and you can see on the daily chart, like, it's, the, the, what they, they just, they like to keep their float small, and, you know, they, they sell and reverse split, and sell and reverse split, it's one of those guys. So I didn't have to look at that, because I know this company already, but um, I looked. I still want to know, and I look for the most relevant information, which for me is the information with volume or the most recent information or both. And this is the part of the daily chart that I cared about. And the most important part that I uh, cared about was this level right here. Uh, the most recent perk uh, off off of a low um, was right here, 475, so, and because we were gapping right here. This is this is the level that I thought was going to be relevant because we were gapping right there. So this 475 level was important to me because of that's where we were opening. Now, um, given the daily the daily uh, the daily support slash resistance right there, it's a very important daily level here. Um, the 475 most recent. The fact that we were opening right here at around that level made it a very critical level uh, in my opinion. It, it was the level that I really cared about. I wanted to see, like going into the open, I wanted to know, like, all right, so here we're gonna find out if 475 is going to be uh, resistance or support. I don't know. You know, I'm just looking at price action to see. Uh, the news was that uh, Morgan Stanley had increased their stake, um, I believe, yeah. And that's another, like, just like RBZ and just like, you know, all of my other hype factor longs, like, that's hype, you know? Like, that's what, that I, I was looking for a long at the open, so what I was looking for was to see if that daily support, uh, if that daily level was going to act as support or resistance, if the market was going to, you know, treat it as support and as, you know, as a, you know, base, as a platform to springboard off of from this news, or if, you know, people weren't going to care about the news and it was going to act as resistance. Now, going in, I had a long bias because Morgan Stanley being one of the biggest um, investment banks there are, uh, you know, any, you know, in, an increase in stake by Morgan Stanley, even if it, you know, even if it is bullshit, even if it is to sell, that's hype. Like, people are going to be like, Morgan Stanley bought it, I'm buying it, you know? That's a, just another example um, of a kind of hype factor. Like, this time it wasn't a blue chip company, it, like, investing or partnering with a, comp with a stock. It was like an investment make, a big name, something that can get excitable, something to, that can, that can uh, continue some momentum. So, going in, I was really hoping to watch and see if 475 was going to um, be support. I wanted it to be support. I didn't want it to just kind of top out at 475 and fade off. That I wouldn't have liked that. You know, unless we got a reclaim on it later, which would have been another good situation. But here, let's zoom in here at the open. And we're opening right here, or right here around this 475 level. And just, I am going to put a horizontal line here at 475. Let's move that up to 475. Yeah. So we're opening right here, you know, and 
right off the, we tanked out of the open and, you know, I was looking and it, before I knew it, like, I think I was watching a couple other stocks too, before I knew it, it just spiked up. And I, I actually watched this spike and I actually had a lot of FOMO right here. It, it took, it took some willpower for me to not buy it here. And the reason why I didn't want to buy it was because just because it popped through 475, that's not necessarily enough for me. That's not, that wasn't proof for me. Like just because it decides to like, you know, it tanked pre-market and then it like rips back. Like that's not proof. That's just it trying, you know, in my opinion. Like I, it did take some like some FOMO because like I was like, oh look, 475, it's poor, it's ripping. But I was able to, you know, suppress that FOMO and not buy here because I probably wouldn't have sold right here. And I probably would have, you know, been unhappy that it tanked anyway. But for me, this wasn't enough and I was able to uh, uh, stay disciplined and not buy this. But then, like, and I was worried that once we were here, I was like, oh man, I missed it. You know, like, you know, and I'm not going to chase it up here. Like, I miss it. It's going to go to 5, 556. Like, and, I, you know, I accepted that and owned that, you know, that was definitely a possibility. But then when we tanked here, this, now this is, this was my opportunity. And, you know, I could have dip bought it, but, in, you know, the way I like to trade and the way I like to buy breaks, I like to buy breaks because I like to see my support thesis prove itself. And this was the opportunity for the stock to prove itself. You know, it, it showed that it had interest out of the gate. Look at the volume. It was it was insane. You know, but not insane, but it was really strong. And so I was like, okay, perfect. There's interest in the stock. People like this idea. People are excited about the Morgan Stanley, um, the news. You know, SAX loves to keep its float low. So like I, um, I think it had like a two million or something million like that's perfect for me so I'm looking to see now we're re we're getting a retest um, a re a chance to prove ourselves at this 475 level right here on the I'm gonna put a line here too just right there like 475 that's close enough so um, yeah so it's right like we're getting this test here and it's you know proving it's tr it tried to tank here and we're holding and you know like I love that we perked back and I was like, all right, this is still alive. Now, normally this is not a buy. Normally I wait for like, like some kind of curl or something um, to try and fail one more time. But as I said in other videos, I think here's my trade. I like to get my feet wet sometimes. And this is one of those times. And normally when I like to get my feet wet, uh, like the decision, the determining factor for that is normally if I feel like if the float's really thin and like there might, it, it could, it could potentially just erupt. And SAEX, I know, is one of those kinds of stocks, you know, especially with the float being like 2 million-ish, there's a potential that it can just go. And like, if it goes, I want to be in, you know, some, but like, so I put on my first starter as it popped through VWAP here. Um, nothing big, uh, just the, the, the feet wet starter. And um, then we got my curl that I like, but for me, this was a little bit premature. Like, I didn't like that it happened right away. Like, I wanted some time, some kind of consolidation so that I could like, key in on the volume and like if the volume was going to stay strong you know that, that was going to support my thesis that like it held that it was going to hold um this 475 support um so i but you know i ended up did buying because i wasn't in enough for me uh like for me to be happy with it and it was proving so i did get a little bit more here still not full and I was actually kind of happy to see this this tank here, like because I felt this was a little bit premature. I was happy, and and now I'm honestly I'm just waiting for a higher low, or I'm or I'm selling under like my 475, 480, you know, 480 level here. This is where I'm like where I'm risking at this point. Um, and we we get the uh, one more consolidation. So if, you know, from the initial perk, we get like this time, this this 10 or 15 minutes that goes by here. And now I really like it, the fact that it tried to reject five and came back holding VWAP, um, you know, like and not even not even be able to test. Like I, I'm really liking that it's just it's just not giving any relief for any kind of shorts. Like it's just holding it's the, the volume is staying strong. We got the strong 110,000 share perk, a strong 200,000 share perk. And when we finally broke over this high, I was in. I, I added I added the rest of my shares. I'm now risking this this 490 area or the where the last dip was, and I have a solid risk. Like my average was about five for the trade. I think it was like 499. And now this is where knowing SAEX uh, kind of gave me a little 
you know, in hi a hindsight, um, really good sell. Like I know that SEX is a perennial ship bag, so of course I'm definitely selling some. Like I have to sell some. If if this popped up here and dropped, and I didn't take off, take any off, I would deeply regret the trade. So I had to take some. I gave it some time, you know. I gave it some time here to to consolidate, and I I just like it, every every push seemed to stuff and. This is where like I already had most off into the perk and I'm just playing with like the last third or so and I'm just you know I just decided I was gonna can it. It was a little bit early, you know, I didn't wait for it to break five forty. When it did break five forty, you know, I was definitely done here, like I, I wasn't gonna hope for it to come back. And it turned out to be the good decision in hindsight. You know, if it went up higher, I I really even wouldn't have cried because it's SAEX and it's such a as we went over the daily chart, it's such a stuffy chart. Like I expect pops to get sold into, um, and it kind of goes back to, to bias flipping. Like why can't I flip the bias? That's for another video. Uh, I'm definitely struggling with the idea, and I want to go over why. But as far as the long thesis, it's 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 strikingly similar to a lot of trades. And I, one thing I want to go over is it's strikingly similar to solo. Uh, and that's another thing to keep in mind, by the way, like my long on RBC and my long on SAEX, these two happen like a day or two after the big move, the big one solo happened. And solo is kind of like was in my opinion was the, the stock that ignited small caps again, it created a whole bunch of these sympathy runners, and it kind of changes the sentiment a little bit to where longs might be a little bit in more in control after solo shorts may be a little bit more afraid and longs may be a little bit more aggressive i'm also taking that stuff into account with my trades on rbz and saex like i'm i tend to be a little bit more aggressive when i feel that shorts um when i feel that the market sentiment has kind of shift towards longs a little bit but anyway it has a strikingly uh similar comparison to solo when i was talking about uh solo on on its first day of the move over here um, when 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 solo popped in I when I did my video on solo I think I told you like hey this 165 level is pretty important and we were opening right at that 165 level so because we're opening right at that you know that daily support level it's different if we're like opening way above I might be short biased if we're opening uh, you know, if it's a, like, I guess I don't really do gap downs, but if it's like a gap down and we're well below support, hey, I might think like we might like come back to test it or something. But when we're opening right at the, the level, it's almost like you know, I, I'm waiting for the market to tell me what's this level going to be. I sit back and like, what's this level going to be? Is it going to be support or is it going to be resistance? And And just like solo, like you can draw a line here. Uh, that's not it. You can draw a line here at 165, which is the which was that daily level here. Draw another line here. Oh, that's right. That way. It's close enough. Yeah, it's it's right there on the daily chart, like that 165 line. Uh, it's not proving to me that it could go down. Like in fact, it's springboarding off and like. You know, this is of course hindsight analysis, but um, this actually, when I saw SEX, it really reminded me of the solo, and it kind of helped confirm my thesis. Uh, the price action helped to confirm my thesis, uh, my long thesis already on SAEX. It looks very similar. Um, the 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 setup that we're opening right at the level, and I'm waiting for the market to tell me what that level is going to be. Is it going to be support or resistance? If it's you know, if I have a long thesis on a stock and it's and the price action is showing me that the daily level is acting more like support I'm it really helps um, like give me the confidence to to enter my long trade so uh, I just wanted to point out that resemblance there with the SAEX trade and the solo trade it was really really similar um, so just to go over it one more time you know the thesis is that Morgan Stanley is going to create a lot of hype and I'm long biased on the stock at least for the morning or for at least a spike or you know I think there's going to be some kind of hype or momentum to it that's the thesis of the trade and now I'm just looking at the price action to say when is it you know is the price actually going to show me that or 
indicate that I, you know, I might be right. And we, we kind of tank here at the open and we rip back. This isn't enough proof for me. Uh, but then when we come back to try and like, I really liked this candle, this, this kind of fake breakdown here when we were going to tank and then we would come back. Um, this is kind of like the second chance, the second time that it's um, failing to, like it's proving that it can hold 475 and that it can't break down. Um, and so like, you know, I, I, I put on my starter, you know, no, knowing that the, the market sentiment has changed a little bit from a, a few weeks ago, like, you know, longs might, you know, people, shorts might be a little bit more fearful. Longs might be in a, a little bit in more control. So I'm, I, I, I didn't wait for my, uh, a, a, a full setup. You know, I put a starter on and let um, the trade develop a little bit and prove to me that it was, you know, working before I wanted to put on more shares. If this would have faded off right here, fine. You know, uh, the 475 didn't work and I would have gotten out and I would have gotten out on a starter. Now, if it would have came back, you know, I might have, if it would have came back and like fake break down at 75 and came back and like did another kind of setup over here maybe, I still might have gotten in that long, you know, like, hey, that's a longer consolidation and I would have had, you know, like uh, maybe another hour or I just pointed at my screen like a dummy. I would have had like another like 30 minutes or so or an hour, however long it took to show me like for the volume to show me that like, hey, this is high volume or maybe if it was a little bit like low volume or dead volume, I might not have entered the trade. Like there's a lot of different ways this could have set up. But, um, you know, this was this this to me proved that 475 was acting as a springboard so i got in and and i got out and you know it happened to be the top but that's hindsight like i didn't i didn't know it was it was going to be the top i just kind of lost a little bit of patience you know knowing that it's saex in the long run and it's a turd so that was um that was that trade and you know uh, I liked it. Like that's that's the end goal of every trade, right? Is at the end of the day um, to not regret any of your decisions. I don't regret anything that I did on this trade. I guess if I could have done one thing better, I mean, if I could have done one thing better, um, you know, I guess I, I probably could have added right here. I guess, but again, it's not really. That's hindsight. I, I probably wouldn't have changed much of, with this trade. Actually, no, I really like this one. So. Um, I guess everyone always asks what your risk was. Here, my risk was uh, for like this low 470 when I got in here at like 490. And when we perked here, my, my risk kind of moved up to 475 to 480. Because with, but by then, like I'd only be in half. So like I'd be willing to get back in. And you know, when I bought, when I bought here, my last final shares at the 510 break um, with the potential domino effect to break 520 over here. You know, this I see as a potential domino. Um, you know, I'm buying here because I'm okay with, I'm adding here because I'm okay with raising my risk um, to this 4, 4, 9, 485 level now. So, you know, like I, I always look at a trade like, you know, I'm only willing to add on a trade if I'm, if I'm willing to um, kind of raise my risk a little bit. That's kind of like the philosophy I like because I don't like to add to a loser. I'd rather add to a winner. And a rule of thumb I like to do is like, if I wasn't in the trade, would I get in here? And if the answer is yes, it's a good ad spot. If the answer is no, it might not be a good ad spot. Um, yeah, so that was this trade and I hope uh, you got something out of it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or uh, just want to talk or whatever. Anyway, have a good day. Aloha.